Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Augusta County Library's YouTube page. Today, we're going to present a storytelling of a book called Thanksgiving in the Woods by Phyllis Alsdorf. Now, this book is about a child that goes to Thanksgiving in the Woods in upstate New York with his family. And get this, the Thanksgiving event is outdoors, and about 200 people normally attend. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the story. When fall winds blow cold and jack-o'-lanterns lose their smiles and all the branches on the trees go bare, corn stalks are rustling in the fields, then we know that Thanksgiving is near and we will have Thanksgiving in the woods. Days and days go by and I keep adding to my Thanksgiving collection of special things that I want to share with my cousins that I haven't seen all year. What would you like to share with your cousins? Maybe like a rock collection or some pretty drawings that you've done? On a chilly morning, Mama wakes us up early. Today's the day. We stuff our treasures into our backpack. We grab our coats. Dad grabs a guitar and I grab a recorder. Let's go. The drive is long. We drive and drive and turn onto a curvy gravel road. Grandpa is at the end of the wood, standing next to an old orange truck. Hi, Grandpa! We hop out and get into the truck with Grandpa. We drive over the fields and down a slope to a clearing where the trees reach almost to the sky. This is the perfect place for Thanksgiving in the woods. I look over to the creek and I see my cousins making a fort out of sticks. Now, what would you use to make a fort if you were in the middle of the woods? I think I would use branches and maybe big leaves. I would find piles of leaves and there's a lot of those right now. Daddy and Grandpa unload wood planks and tables to make large, large tables and bales of hay that we can sit on. Uncle Charles starts a bonfire. Neighbors place tarps over branches and cover the table to protect us from the weather. We are almost ready for Thanksgiving in the woods. Early the next morning, we're the first ones to be up. I can hardly wait for breakfast. Pull on your sweaters and your boots. Neighbors are already at the site. Here, help with the fire. We all need to help if we're going to have Thanksgiving in the woods together. Soon, a tractor comes over the hill and in the hay bed is Grandma and Mom and surrounding them are a bunch of pots and pans all clanking along. Inside those pots and pans are all the Thanksgiving food that you can even imagine. There's gravy and mashed potatoes and cornbread and stuffing and turkey and all of the good food that is coming to you on Thanksgiving Day. Now, can you imagine having your Thanksgiving feast delivered to you on a tractor? Neighbors, relatives, and lots of people that I don't even know come across the fields and meet us in the hollow of the lovely pine trees. They bring baskets of food, things like apples, applesauce, pie, fruit, all things yummy to share. At one o'clock, Grandma rings her special bell. We all form a circle and sing. Then we talk about what we are thankful for. Thanksgiving in the woods has begun. People begin to come to the table, grabbing turkey and buns and all of the food you could possibly eat. Grown-ups play fiddles and banjos. People surround the campfire and sing along. Dad grabs his guitar and I grab my recorder. And you can just hear the song. We stand around the bonfire, warming ourselves up. Grandma passes out marshmallows to roast by the fire. When everyone is stuffed, people start packing their gear in groups of two and three and walk back to the farmyard, bringing Thanksgiving in the woods to an end. I walk with my family on the path through the woods. Back at the bonfire, I hear someone playing the banjo and someone starts singing. 